we'll be look, looking to launch that in 2023. Um, we, so I think Saga, the reason why we did Saga is because for the longest time, crypto has mostly been kind of like a desktop interaction. You know, you sit in, sit in front of your computer to participate in like DeFi protocols or maybe you uh, interact with your wallet through like your Chrome browser or your, your internet browser in general. Um, and it's kind of weird, right? Like if you ask everyday people, like majority of the world, almost everyone interacts or uses the internet on their mobile phone nowadays. A lot of their interactions are on mobile. So actually having crypto be desktop but still be cutting edge technology seems ironic. So I think for us, the Saga phone was an opportunity to try to push the boundaries on what a Web3 crypto phone would look like. Um, there are a few challenges there, and I think the reason why it hasn't happened or hasn't seen much success is number one, I think crypto in the past hasn't has, had, had as much adoption as it has now. And with NFTs, the demographic and like the market's broadened significantly. So I'd, I like to think that there's a high success rate for some sort of mobile product coming out. The other part is I think there's some tough problems in mobile, which are um, around private key management and how to like manage your wallet on a mobile device. Um, the other one is the app store. Naturally, there's like a lot of friction with trying to get Web3 applications onto mobile because Apple or maybe Android has, or Google has actually blocked a lot of these applications, maybe for good intentions, so maybe protect investors or to protect retail. Um, but also I think they've taken, they, they've taken a blanket strategy or some of the large corporations have taken a blanket strategy and it has been cramping innovation and not allowing some like early stage founders to really experiment, distribute their platform out to the broader market. So, and then I, I think the last one is that a lot, of the, a lot of the developer frameworks that exist today are not catered for Web3. They're designed for traditional like Java slash Web2 development. And having something native, Web3, is going to be like a very powerful Lego piece. So I guess all in all, like Saga is trying to solve all of these problems. Um, and we might not be, maybe we'll be successful, maybe we won't be. But I think importantly, we're not here trying to replace Apple or Google. If we do, great. But realistically, if we can just push the space forward and try to create some standards and some benchmarks and start to pick away at some of these more complex problems, um, then I think we'll set ourselves up and also the broader Web3 space up better for mass, mass adoption. If we can tell, when is it going to be available for Japanese people? Uh, I'm not sure at this stage. So it, the rollout's probably going to be in a few phases, but it's primarily going to start in the US. Um, so it is possible for Japanese people or like just people outside of the US to get access to the phone, but they'll likely have to go overseas to pick it up. So our initial distribution channels will probably be in-person pickups at various hacker houses or various physical events that Solana hosts. And we host most of them, are, most of them in the US, but we'll actually be hosting some in like other countries as well. So. Hopefully in, I guess to answer your question, hopefully middle to late 2023. Um, <laughs> but yeah, mainly in the US first and foremost. So maybe you're gonna have a partnership with Japanese companies to sell them. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure if we will use traditional distribution, method, distribution methods for the phone. Um, we might just do some of the distribution in a more boutique manner um, rather than selling it at every single like large foreign retail store, if that makes sense. I think similar to similar to how like Tesla did their first distribution, it was a very boutique, uh, maybe like high end, high performance phone. Um, one that was for people that were very, very passionate, like a niche community. And I think that's a similar approach to how we're taking it. We want to target people that are really eager to get involved. Like Web3 is already a big part of their lives and people that will likely use it first and foremost, to see if we have product market fit and create a bit of a feedback loop. And if we start to see some sort of success there, then we can start to look at maybe scaling that out on a broader, on a broader level. And then maybe exploring like more traditional distribution channels like, like you're talking about, you know, whether it be through um, 
through like SoftBank stores um, in Japan or something like that, as an example. Uh, but I don't think we're quite there yet. One step at a time. Yeah. When we were designing the phone or like coming up with the idea, uh, we were a little bit scared about what the reception would be. We were scared that people would say, hey, look, you know, people have tried this before. It's never worked. Like, why are you doing this? Like, why are you wasting time on this? But I feel like um, a lot of people realize what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, and they realize they, they're aligned with us as to like why it's important and how it could really drive the next wave of adoption for crypto. So we've been really grateful for that. There's going to be a wallet installed already or something. Correct. Yeah, yeah. Um, so there'll be a secure enclave. Um, within within the within the phone itself, where it'll keep all the private keys, um, and that way people don't have to worry about leaking private sensitive information while interacting with Web3 applications on their phone. Right now, like I tried to open the NFT market and the connect with it, and it takes like three steps, right? Yeah, exactly right. Yeah, and I think a lot of that friction can totally go away if wallets, whether it be like Phantom or MetaMask have the ability to actually build straight onto the mobile stack, then they can have a very seamless experience. It allows people not only to buy these goods, but to buy these NFTs or digital assets that can then they can then interact with at a deeper level. I don't think we're quite there yet, but I think what we're seeing in the NFT space right now is the first inkling of that, the first iterations of that. Um, and we're also starting to see more and more metaverses come out um, and I think there are a lot of, you know, a lot of different flavors of metaverses and varying levels of success. But the important thing is that, like, one, there's proven demand for digital assets or in-game assets. Two, I think we're also starting to see people embrace this idea of digital identity. They're starting to replace their profile pictures with a digital avatar for who they kind of see themselves as. Um, and I think soon enough, we're going to start new verticals, whether it be like through fashion um, or whether it be through metaverses where people are going to start to explore and expand and start to expand digital identity beyond just one avatar, maybe having more things attached to it over time. Saga, can you do something with that metaverse? Or like that? For sure, yeah. I think like um, we're definitely going to be Saga is definitely going to be a phone that's going to support games, um, and naturally it's going to support NFTs as a result. Um, but like even if it's not through Saga, we're still seeing uh, traditional Web two companies like Facebook or YouTube or Instagram all starting to embrace uh, NFTs. You know. Instagram's allowing people to have NFTs as their filters. Um, and then we're seeing Facebook allow people to kind of integrate and verify their NFTs. Similarly, similarly for YouTube, et cetera. So I think like we're definitely seeing, um, we're seeing our worlds collide in, in many ways here. Mm. How much is the price going to be in this time? Do you know? Oh uh, yeah, so it's going to be uh, around a thousand US dollars. A uh, thousand US dollars. Yep, 1,000 US dollars. Um, so people can actually sign up and put down deposits today. It's like 100 US dollars for a deposit um, to have us reserve the phone for you. Um, so I, I think we wanted to, like building what I said earlier, we wanted to target really passionate Web3 users first and foremost. And these, I think these type of power users probably expect a higher quality product. Um, which is why the price tag is not on a budget price tag, but it's, I'd say, mid to high range um, of what like a phone would cost. And I think if we see, start to see success there, um, then we can maybe look at more more affordable, mass-produced phones um, that are more accessible to more people. But yeah, like I said earlier, baby steps. Yeah, well, one step at a time.